Hello and welcome to the Quizmakers podcast. Our guest today is Alexander Klasen. Alex is an external data protection officer, also working for Riddle. And we're going to chat today about privacy, the European privacy laws, and the most recent cancellation of the Privacy Shield Agreement and what that means for doing business globally. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the show. Hello, Boris. Thanks for welcoming me. So let, let's start actually a little background. Um, what got you into the business of being uh, an external data protection officer? Do you just love privacy so much or what got you to this job? Well, uh, I'm studying laws and I'm, 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 I'm soon about to, to write my exams. And in 2016, um, a mentor of mine brought me to the, up to the idea, hey, Alex, you're uh, IT IT friendly and you have you know the stuff and you're you're into the the the, um, the the whole thing and why don't you try privacy protection or data protection because it's it's a, a crossover from from laws and uh, the protection of personal data and IT and could be some interesting field for you and so I started to to inform myself about the the whole subject and then I started to to certify myself by the fifth seat in a, in a, in a lot longer course and since 2016 the end of 2016 I'm in the data protection business so that was really good timing with GDPR coming and and really big need uh, for yeah privacy. it was two years two years before but it was what was at the horizon so uh, we, we were informed about the, the mechanics which come up or will come up which came up at least <laughs> uh, and so uh, I could I could gather some some experience before the GDPR yes so as a business owner when when GDPR came out and when the first lawsuits happened and people got scared we started to hate GDPR more and more to an extent yeah. so from from an end user point of view have you seen any benefits of GDPR or is it making life harder for everyone? Uh, part, part. Uh, on the one hand, I think it's uh, a regaining of privacy. Personal data has become more and more a commodity. So you, you, you went back from, from the, the human, human being to, to trading good. Uh, something uh, the GDPR wanted to, to, to turn back. So under the concern of privacy, uh, the GDPR is uh, something pretty good for every customer, even for us ourselves, because we are customers ourselves to any other company. Uh, but uh, out of the, the point of view of the companies, it's a hard deal because all those mostly uh, cheap services, which always work pretty well, can't be, be used anymore or can be used in the way you want, want to use them because they always cause some problems. So you have to, you have to make the decision as, as a company owner, do I want to, to, to pay money for a GPR compliant service? Or do I uh, want to risk maybe to get fined, but until then I have a, a cheap solution which works pretty well. So both, both, both positions are hard to, to, to bring into uh, a level because they are very contradictive. Right. So, uh, but I think in the end, um, the, the need to, to obey the, the, the European uh, privacy protection laws will bring a wider range of, uh, of internet or software based services. Uh, in favor of the customers because uh, there will be, I think there will be more and more and many more uh, also European countries uh, which get uh, which get the chance to, to provide their services to their customers and so can bring in some new ideas uh, which maybe the big four don't have or didn't have at least. Right. So you mentioned for European companies, um, at Riddle, you know, we have a lot of customers outside the EU and we offered lots of tools in Riddle to comply with GDPR. Do you think it's important, let's say, for a U.S. company to comply with GDPR, or can they just ignore it? 
Uh, it's of course very important also for US companies because we have two, two uh, um, ways in which uh, the GDPR applies to you as a US company. We have on the one hand, on the one hand, we have the geographical scope. The actual geographical scope of the GDPR. So that means we have two principles. First, the establishment principle, and second, the marketplace principle. So that, well, the principle of establishment means that the GDPR applies uh, in principle whenever the data processing body has at least one establishment in the EU. So if you process uh, Euro European data. Uh, at least in one branch office, you're under under the, the control of the GDPR at least. Or if you have uh, uh, non non business or branch office over here, but you plan to to uh, for example uh, track the behavior of uh, people inside the EU or are about to to sell goods over the internet, so you you get inflicted by the GDPR due to the marketplace principle. So. In, in the conclusion, you shouldn't care about being a non 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 EU business because you, you are this or that way are, are, is, you are inflicted by the GDPR. So you have to be compliant. Also, you are outside of the EU. So if you want to take 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 uh, take part and partic participate in this uh, very strong financial market, you have to play by the rules. So the only the so the only option really, if you're a US company and you don't want to comply is you have to essentially block all European traffic, which yeah, exactly. is possible, so, but you're going to lose a lot of business. That's, that's the point behind it, exactly. And I mean, the good thing for everyone is that more and more countries are establishing similar rules. Like Canada has a very similar rule. California has very similar laws. And if you comply <clears throat> with the European privacy regulations, you pretty much automatically comply with the Canadian and the Californian. Privacy. Yeah, you, you you can you can can say so. Yeah, because the the European uh, data protection law GDPR uh, is a yeah a, a model for for many other countries like you mentioned, and um, the regulations are uh, in some cases pretty harsh. I think, but on the other hand, um, you have to you have to you have to see why they are that harsh, because in Europe we, we consider the right of privacy as a, as a European human right. So that's why it's, it's regulated that hard, like, like we, like we uh, witness it the, these days. And um, so you can say if you comply to the GDPR, in most cases, I think you can be compliant to the other laws because they just uh, took, took the best out of the European law. That makes sense. Um, but now that we mentioned the US a recent development, and we're recording this in, in August of 2020, um, the internet world got shocked because the previously in place privacy shield agreement, which regulated data exchanges between the US and Europe, got mm -hmm. canceled, which essentially now means if you are a European company, or if you want to comply with GDPR, you cannot transfer any data to a U.S. company. Is that a correct statement? More or less, uh, under, under, under very, very hard conditions, you maybe could still transfer data to the U.S., but that's not, not practical. Okay, so is that the end of me using Amazon hosting, Google hosting, uh, Google services, Google analytics? Uh, Facebook ads, Facebook for business, and so forth? You could say that with a short yes, <laughs> by now. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it depends on what all, all those uh, um, companies will do in the future to their, to their uh, services, how they will recreate them, uh, if they are, are able to create them, recreate them uh, GDPR compliant. So what? Then you can use them, of, of course, again. But 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 uh, until now, uh, since now you can't because um, we have no more uh, way to to transfer data safely in, uh, to the U.S. and back uh, because the the U.S. are now marked as a yeah unsafe state under the 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 view of the GDPR concerning the U.S. security laws. 
and they're unsafe um, because the U.S. government reserves the right to access any data stored on. Yeah, that, that, that's the point because you have no 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 functional protection against uh, these uh, procession of, of of the U.S. government. So uh, the uh, the European High Court of Justice said, okay, under this circumstances, you can transfer a, a European personal data to the U.S. It's not possible. And I just want to pick up something you said earlier about these laws making way for new and potentially better services. Just out of personal experience at Riddle, we, up until Privacy Shield was canceled, we used Intercom to power our support chat. But a support software naturally needs to capture lots of personal identifiable information, like someone's name and email, so we can communicate. And we had to swap out intercom because they were not compliant anymore. And yeah. we found a software from France called crisp.chat, which is actually light years better. So we already benefited um, and our customers will benefit from a much better experience um, thanks to the cancellation of Privacy Shield. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be more examples um, of this now that European companies was probably less funding than some of the Silicon Valley players stand a much better chance. Yeah, that's, that's what, I, what I mentioned with, with the, the wider range of, of uh, new, new uh, solutions and services, because now, like, like, like you said, those companies become, uh, get the funds they need to maybe uh, write the business, be very appealing to, to every user. And uh, to, to go a step back to the EU use privacy shield, to 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 say uh, one last thing even so if you if you don't fear to get fined directly by some some uh, european uh, authority uh, you at least get fined indirectly because your customers at least your european customers are forced to to switch to gdpr compliant uh, services so even so you don't get fined in a direct way you lose a lot of money because you lose your customers uh, and so you have to to get ready uh, in, a, in a pretty short amount of time, otherwise the market is closed for you. So in, I wanted to wrap this up uh, with one more question. We introduced you as our data uh, protection officer. Would you recommend every company having an external or internal data protection officer? It depends on, on, the, on the, the size of your company and at least um, if you have a person inside your company uh, who is uh, uh, able to deal with all the subjects coming up with data protection because you have on the one hand technical issues so you have to always to 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 understand the technical informations of the services and and hardware you're using on the other hand you have to uh, to understand uh, the the law component loss component of of, of the work for data protection officer. So if you don't have a person inside your company which can can deal with both of, of these sites, you better should get an, an ex external, like a, per, a person like me, uh, who is uh, very into into the subject and interested in, in all the questions coming up with this because it's it's always very interesting to, to uh, deal with all the new problems coming up with new techniques and uh, so, Someone like me, and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can, I can agree to that. We we're having a lot of fun discussions. Whenever we launch a new feature, we run it by Alex, and he usually annoys us a lot by telling us, yeah. "No, you." Can't I'm sorry for that, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, we always come up with a solution that is probably better than what we initially envisioned. So thank you for being on the show, Alex. If anyone, any of our listeners needs an external data protection officer, you will find Alex's email down there in the show notes. Um, send him a note and he will connect with you. All right. Thank you for being on the show, Alex. Much Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.